the document that you see before you is entitled Formal Statements and Objections, Unlawful Actions. And I'm going to read it so that you can hear it and think about it as you see it. Now comes former counselor, Je Reverend Gerald W. Spade Sr. to set forth formal statements and objections before the Honorable Colport Borough Council and Averes. Statements and objections. Statement number one, Proverbs 16, 9 states, In their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. The Honorable President of Colport Borough clearly demonstrated with the Bible in hand, the Word of God, that the President had her Bible with her at the January 8th, 2021 Colport Borough Council meeting, here and after, will be known as CBCM. The question is, does the President obey the Word? There is an, another Bible, especially prepared, for all the Commonwealth Councils, Title VIII, so named Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Borough Code, herein after known as Borough Code or BC. According to the Borough Code supranamed, auditors are to meet the first Tuesday of every year. See BC 1041A. The auditors did not meet on January the 5th 2021, as prescribed by law or borough code according to the Colport Borough Council meeting on January 8th. In 2019, your citizen taxpayer writer prepared a resolution 2019 number 15 for the express purpose of ensuring an ordinance would be enacted for independent auditors. The Ordinance of codification did not have any provisions for hiring independent auditors. The resolution was duly enacted December 27th, 2019, and the re recorded in the records of the borough. The resolution states, whereas the Coport Borough Council shall amend Coport Borough Ordinance 194 to include the substance of Ordinance 190 in the amended ordinance 194 in the year 2020 to ensure provisions for the independent auditor for the purpose of audit of borough records and it goes on and it was uh, certified and enacted uh, in 2019 on the 27th. To this date, no ordinance has been prepared for an independent auditor, as you will see in the video of January 8th, 2020. And that is on YouTube, or you can go to wbcis.com and it will direct you to the video of January 8th, 2021. Colport Borough has an unfinished 2018 audit of financial records. Colport Borough has no audit for 2019 and 2020. There are no auditors, no ordinance for an independent auditor, no resolution for an independent auditor, a violation of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Borough Code, Title VIII, and a Bible of the Commonwealth local governments. An argument, or this is the opinion of your writer. Since there are no audits under consideration for independent auditors, it is reasonable to suggest the Auditor General or the Honorable Court should intervene in the negligence of the Colport Borough Council. It appears the Borough Council has projected blame on the Honorable Solicitor in the January 8, 2021 Colport Borough Council meeting for not having a timely ordinance for hiring independent auditors. In the course of the January 8th 2021 meeting, Colport Borough Council heard former Honorable President Paul Zubich expressed vital claims regarding finances and the lack of good record keeping. The Honorable President Trent, using psychological pro projection, stated the reason for the loss of the 2018 auditors 
independent auditors, was because of the inter interference of former President Zubich and the borough vice president, Kevin Swagger. It is highly inappropriate to excuse the negligence of Colport Borough Council by psychologically projecting blame on others to excuse the inaction of council. Does the Holy Bible not explain? Shall Thou shalt not bear false witness. The fact is clear, as you will see in the video. Colport Barrow Council has not enacted an ordinance or a resolution or hired independent auditors. This is not the fault of former President Zubich. The 2018 independent auditors were hired without an ordinance, resolution, or any legal instrument for their being auditors. The 2018 independent auditors resigned with good reason. Psychological projection is a defense mechanism demonstrated in Colport Borough Council meeting that was full of mistruth, negligence, weakness, and blame shifting. Further, the honorable solicitor is being purported to be the holdup or blamed for why council has not enacted an ordinance for independent auditors. There is no evidence that the honorable solicitor is addressing any questions of law. A right to know request has been denied without any response for documents for honorable solicitor to questions submitted by the Colport Borough Council. And according to the Borough Code, if a question of law is submitted to a solicitor, an answer shall be in written appearance to the council. See 1117A3, written answer. The exact words are, this, this is a duty of the solicitor, furnish the council or committees of the council, the mayor or head of the department, upon request, with an opinion in writing upon any question of law which may be submitted by any of them in their official capacities. The question is, did council set forth a question or any questions to the honorable solicitor? Or, in the alternative, did council not want to pay the money to receive an answer from the honorable solicitor? Was any question of law served to the honorable solicitor in the matter of an ordinance for an independent auditor? Has the Honorable Mayor served a question to the Honorable Solicitor? Has the Honorable Mayor been served an answer in written appearance for a question? Several questions of law have been served verbosely and in written appearance to the Honorable Council of Colport Borough without any response from the Honorable Solicitor. It appears that those questions were not served to the Honorable Solicitor because no written response has been read in open session of Colport Borough Council. And if the Honorable Solicitor was served a question of law, it would reasonably be believed the Honorable Solicitor is negligent pursuant to Borough Code 1117A3 if no written response was made. Or in the alternative, has the President of Council deceived the public in Colport Borough Council meetings of false claims of serving questions to the Honorable Solicitor. It is your citizen taxpayer's opinion that a professional solicitor would be timely and serve answers in written appearance for any question served by an Honorable Mayor, Committee Chairman, or the Honorable President of Council. The answer would naturally be read into the record under correspondence in an Honorable Council meeting in the opinion of your writer. Statement number two. The duty of a treasurer and the council members are, by law, separate entity functions, and by law cannot be commingled. Explained in the Borough Code, Title Eight. No borough council member may be a treasurer or act as an assistant to the treasurer. See 1107 and Borough Code 1112. A council person may not be a treasurer or an assistant treasurer by law, according to Title VIII, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Borough Code. Argument. On January the 8th, 
2021, in the Coport Borough Council meeting, the president of council announced she has been performing the duties of a treasurer. The president of council testified that she has been acting as an assistant treasurer for days with a vote of the honorable council. See past videos of Coport Borough Council meetings to see the lack of motion or approval of Coport Borough Council for the president to be an assistant treasurer. Even if this were lawful, does the president of council have a bond? Is the lawful treasurer not able to do the work? Is the borough treasurer overwhelmed with work that she is unable to do basic tasks of the duty of a treasurer? If the normal duties of a treasurer are not being done with or by the borough treasurer, how will the borough treasurer do the duties of a tax collector? If the borough treasurer needs an assistant, why did not the Honorable Council hire and appoint assistant treasurer? We move on to the objections. Objections one, no council person shall be an assistant treasurer of the borough of Colpore by law and a bond is required. See Borough Code 1112, 1107G. The president without a bond is working as an assistant treasurer. Second objection. The honorable solicitor has been allegedly served with legal questions of law that have not been answered in written appearance. Many months have passed without written answers to questions of law. The public is denied hearing the written opinion from the Honorable Solicitor. Number three, objection number three. The Borough of Colport under Resolution 2019, number 15, duly enacted December 27th, 2019, stated to the citizens and taxpayers that in 2020, Council was going to amend Ordinance 194 for the inclusion of a line item for hiring independent auditors. Hiring an independent auditor requires, by ordinance passed by a two-thirds vote of the entire number of members of Council elected. See Borough Code 101057. Borough Council in 2020 was negligent, harming the citizens and taxpayers. No full audits of 2018, 2019, and 2020 have been conducted. There is no independent auditors, no elected auditors for the years named in this objection. Council is negligent. Thank you for hearing this statements and objections. Enjoy the video that is now going to be aired on this video. Thank you. Yeah, I can't get him to. Um, so we could probably take that stand and move it in a little bit closer and, and see if we can stand it the only way from the view is sitting straight up, and then I would have to be further away than he's going to be. Yeah, the audio we quality. We were going to do a town like in town and see. Yeah. yeah. It's something yeah. a little bit better. That would be a good idea. Yeah. The audio is not real great either. Well, hopefully that'll change as soon as everything calms down. I didn't know we were going to have this many people, but try and maintain here. Okay. Call the meeting to order. You would rise. Is there anybody opposed to being present while prayer is done? Um, give you the opportunity to leave the room. Uh, we have with us tonight um, uh, Pastor Penbrook from Ramey. Yes. Pastor, Penna Baker. What, yeah. Penna Baker. Yeah. It's pronounced Penna Baker. Okay, yes. so you do pronounce the other E. Yeah. Okay, so he is with us from the Ramey charge, correct? Yes. Which covers Almondsville, Janesville, and Ramey. Uh, the mayor can come on in. <laughs> Thank you. Before we do the prayer.
Let us pray. Father God, we are humbled by your sovereign works in our lives. Amen. How you move us, how you touch our lives, sometimes even when we don't know it. And as this gathering of your servants come together tonight, we just pray, Father God, that they would welcome you into this meeting and that as they make decisions, as they speak back and forth, that all of that might be done in, in love and consideration. And Father God, that they might look forward with wisdom to the growing of this community and also the protection of this community from those things that might harm the people that live here. We pray for Coalport. We pray for every individual that lives in this borough that you might touch them, that they might see the glory of your majesty and they might be touched by the love and grace of your son, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Bless each and every individual here. Allow them to sense your mercy. Allow them to know your love. In the name of our risen Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have uh, meeting minutes to be read from December 14th and the 31st. Regularly scheduled meeting of Coalport Borough, December 14th, 2020. Meeting call to order at 7 p.m. Carried on by Pastor Lynn Finley. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance, roll call attendance. President Barbie Trent, Robert Lee, LaDawn Yingling, Sean Yingling. Absent members were Vice President Kevin Swagger and Mayor Ma Margaret Malina. Presentation of meeting minutes for November 2nd, 2020. Robert Lee made a motion to accept the minutes with additions and or corrections. Sean Neal on the second, all rise, motion carried. Visitors and guests, Ian Gableson, Walter Hooley, Pastor Lynn Finley, Joseph Keith, and Gerald Spade. Joseph Keith dropped off the policy for the upcoming year. Walter Hooley got salt this week. Walter Hooley and Andrew Morsey will be putting on the, the plow on the truck tomorrow the 15th. Walter Hooley reported that the door for down at the garage was fixed. Gerald Spade added information on a permit business council spoke with the solicitor to find out how to make the secretary the tax collector unfinished business secretary the solicitor and secretary will be working together to create an ordinance to cover resolution 15. Uh, the policy for council meetings has been revised motion robert lee made a motion to accept the revised resolution the donning one second you can Coast give it to president Barney Trent, yes robert lee yes the donning lane yes Sean Yingling, no. Resolution 2020-6 revised. The court reporter will be doing the transcript of the Minute Mart hearing from the council room. Uh, the rate of, at the rate of $3.50 per page. New business, nothing to report. Mayor, nothing to report. Streets and lights. Sean Yingling sent a letter to Penelope and hasn't heard anything back yet. Parks and buildings. Porter Johns were removed and the dumpster was flipped. Personnel, everything is going great. Uh, finances, nothing to report. Right to know, report, nothing to report. Finance and treasurer's report, motion. Sean Yingling made a motion to give the employees their Christmas bonuses. Robert Lee second, all eyes, motion carried. Motion, Robert Lee made a motion to accept the finance report. Second by LaDawn Yingling, all eyes, motion carried. Motion, Robert Lee made a motion to pay the bills to keep the borough running until the upcoming meeting. Sean Yingling second, all eyes, motion carried. Sean Yingling and Secretary Morsey will go over the Penelope bills. Executive session with the fire company for litigation. 
Well, it started at 7.48 p.m. and ended at 8.03 p.m. Motion. Sean Yingling made a motion to approve the budget for 2021. Robert Lee's second. All rise. Motion carried. Good up number of cleanup. They will be decided at a later time. Gerald Feta asked about the tax resolution. There will be a special meeting for this. Robert Lee made a motion to adjourn. The Don Yingling second. All rise. Motion carried. Meeting adjourned at 8.12 p.m. Special meeting of Cold Court Bureau, December 31st, 2020. Meeting called at 7 p.m. Present Council, Present Council, President Trent, LeBon Yingling, and Sean Yingling. Absent, Vice President Swagger, Robert Lee, and Mayor Margaret Madalena. Guest was Diane Byers. Resolution 2020-8 was presented to Council. Motion, Sean Yingling made a motion to pass Resolution 2020-8. LaDon Yingling second, roll call vote was taken. President Trent, yes. LaDon Yingling, yes. Sean Yingling, yes. Resolution 2020-8 passed. Motion. LaDon Yingling made a motion to advertise for the first meeting of 2021. Sean Yingling second, all eyes, motion carried. LaDon Yingling made a motion to adjourn. Sean Yingling second, all eyes, motion carried. Meeting adjourned at 7.03 p.m. I will not to accept the meeting when it's right. <laughs> All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Visitors and guests. Mr. Zubich. Please call me Pat. Barbie, I just wanted to go over. I had some issues with your budget. And I sent everybody a, a, a little letter regarding that. The first one would be uh, liquid fuels. I was, had appointments today and did not um, even, wasn't even aware of the email. I didn't have a chance to open it up. I made it in time for the meeting, so I'm not fully aware okay. of your email. Okay. Well, it, it should be pretty straightforward. It's, on your budget, you put that you're going to receive 25000 for liquid fuels. In, in order to do that, that implies that you resolve those tax issues. In Which part. was mailed out and has been resolved. So, so you'll be getting that. They have to go over everything. There was also a tax, or there was also a liquid fuels audit that needs to be completed. Yes, yes that's an so, ask you. so that also, we are waiting on work from that. And, and so, then of course, you also need to be audited right, in order ex to get Exactly, there. yes. So do you have a firm that's going to be your audit? As of yet? Yeah. No, we have letters out, and we do have a mm -hmm. couple individuals who we know personally. So at this point, you can't say. And like we also 100%. have to wait on our right. solicitor because, as Reverend Spade had brought up previously, there was an issue with an ordinance concerning yes. independent auditors. Yes. Our solicitor has to guide us through that because we can't. And that's a hard one. That goes all the way back to it, 212. It, exactly. Exactly. Something. Exactly. So. I, those are issues that need to be fixed so well, that we can use what what that's kind of saying though is you probably will not get liquid fuels or at least you can't say with very much certainty so you wouldn't put that in your budget you know the budget is to give you the clearest look into the future that you can possibly get exactly amen yes but you want to know you don't want to be blindsided at this point if you're not 99 percent sure that you're going to get that the rule of budgeting is that you wouldn't do that if you had an auditor you would be able to ask her i don't see scott here anymore no. Well, you Scott does come him. from time to time, and he's he, uh, able to be contacted by phone or email. Yeah, well, I'm saying he could validate what I'm saying. I believe him. Yeah. That you should, you should adjust your spending accordingly. If you're pleasantly surprised later on that you're going to get that, then then you can change things. But for budgeting purposes, and I've done this a long time, you should not put that in. You should put the line item and put a zero by it. We haven't even got 2019. The, yeah, there was no 2019 audit. I'm not sure what effect that will have on liquid fuels for 2021. And you didn't get I it in 2020. It would not. It would not. Yeah, it's just so that we one have to year, have right? these issues taken care of by June or July. June. Well, well, and that will determine. Yeah, well, another problem. Now, you might get an extension due to this COVID thing. You would have to have an auditor file an extension. This audit for 2020 is to be done by April 1st. That's very unlikely. So somebody needs to file an extension normally. Now, they, they may waive some of that because of COVID. 
And but anyway, have for names. budgeting purposes. We do have some names and we have a list of people that we have reached out for as far as auditors. But again, like I said, um, our solicitor has to rectify that situation so that we can use independent auditors. That's, that's a tough one because you were on that board when that happened. And the board at the time, I, I told them not to do their ordinances. They glued all their ordinances into the book. And you'll end up with the same result that you had when we codified them. Well, we're hoping to do better Yeah, as the time I, goes on. We tried to fix that in 2018, and you know that. And we were hit with so many things that we didn't get to fix the uh, um, ordinances. We're working at it. Yeah, I, I know. Well, I'm just saying for budget purposes, that 25000 will cause you trouble. If you don't get it and you have your spending as though you're going to, it shouldn't be in there. I believe this in God. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> I believe in God too, but I'm saying He's not running the meeting. You guys are, are in charge no, he's, of doing this. He, he's right here with me. Well, then, well, 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 he, he, somebody, I'm saying, somebody, board made a mistake. That's not the right thing to do. Now, the other thing I would like to ask is about Ron Fairman. Is he auditing your books again? He sent me an email. He would be the liquid fuels auditor. And I sent that to all of you. I forwarded that, even though I'm not the president. He and has she has, and I've informed him multiple times. Yeah. That, well, which I appreciate different. you um, reaching well, out. Well, here's good. Is he going to do the audit here? Or no, he I am sending everything to him. You might reconsider that. And I'll tell you what, he will come here gladly. He's a really good, competent, certified man. He's a CPA. He's a, he works for the um, Auditor General's mm -hmm. office. He is a good contact, so I, I would want to meet that guy. I have met him. I know him. I spent a long time with him. He's a good man. You might ask him to do the audit here. He'll gladly do that, and then you all would have the chance to build a contact with that man okay. who can help with some of these issues. He's, he's a good guy. He just really is and smart. All right, so that, that would take me down to some uh, here, here's something else you are aware that you're supposed to that DCED wants you to use QuickBooks for, for your bookkeeping yes All right, well you kind of get your stuff on a spreadsheet yes and then she's to do it, it would be good if you could get it on QuickBooks because here, here's the problem you ran into before you guys were looking at one set of books this is what happened in 2010 we were given a spreadsheet. We had no choice. Angel didn't know how to use QuickBooks, and as a board, we had to have something, some means of keeping track of the money. But she was then to transfer that to QuickBooks, which you did, but you used, and she did the same thing, used different line items. So essentially, they're auditing a different set of books. Now, what happened there, you don't know this. Kevin knows this. He gave me permission to talk to Katie. He asked me to talk to Katie. I gave Kay, Katie the spreadsheets so she could complete the audit. She can't recreate the bookkeeping. She's to say that your bookkeeping, the stuff that you receive, accurately reflects what happened here financially. She was not able to complete that audit, so you got a no opinion audit, which these, do you know what that is, what it means when you get a yes. no opinion audit? You all, you all yeah, they that? explained that to us. Yeah. Um, she, but here, here's the problem. Nobody asked this at the meeting with her. You, you remember when Angel did the books in 2017, you had $68,000 worth of improper bookkeeping entries. You guys used the same line items that she used, so you got exactly the same results that she did. The line items have to match this, this budget. And the reason I'm bringing that up is... When you go down through here, there's something that you have as utility tax. What you want to do is use DCED's line items, which that would be pertinent. And the reason which is public utility utility tax, and, and I noticed at one of your meetings there was some confusion what that was. You guys were picking on uh, Windstream, claiming they don't pay, that they're, tax, they're not tax exempt, they don't pay real estate tax. Well, they pay this pertinent tax in lieu of them. And that takes me to another line item on your budget. You have $500 budgeted there. That tax has never, ever even brought in $100. If you check that for 2019, you received $69. So you see what all this is doing, it's inflating your income. And I got a whole bunch of these that I can go through. Well, 
being that this is a regular meeting night, would you mind meeting with council at another yeah, session? Yeah, you so know me, or you call me at any time, and I would be more than glad to help. But, but the bottom line here, you're going to you're going to bring in eighty nine thousand rather than when you go through all the corrections. Okay, I, I'm willing to go over it with you. And, and yeah, I'd be. And about, about there is, there's, there's one other thing I would like to mention before we leave, and I'll, I'll skip a whole bunch of these. You also said you were going to receive three thousand dollars in county aid. Now, some of that it's like liquid fuels. That is restricted funds. You can't use that to pay the water bill or the, or the light bill, various things. So it would be for a paving job, capital expenditures. If if you right now you can get nine thousand dollars. This was the luck I had in two thousand eight. Right, we I'm held not, it last year. We can hold it this year, but we have to use it next year. You have to yes. Otherwise, Correct. you will never go beyond that nine thousand. You don't want to throw three thousand away. You can use that money with your liquid fuels in order to pave something, Correct. anything. I mean, at least you'll have something out there to show for your efforts, something to get done. Exactly. But you're going to be in a jam one way or another. You're going to run a deficit. You just are. So you're going to have to look at your spending. I mean, you won't bring in what you think you're going to bring in. What did you bring in in 2019? Or, or 2020? The year that just went by, what did you bring in? Was on, do you know? I don't have a copy of That troubles me. Do you guys not feel that's essential information? How can you do your job if you don't know? I'm not trying to be really mean to anybody, but you have to know how much money came in here in that year. If somebody would ask me that, I'd feel, if I'm a councilman, I should be able to answer that question without even thinking about it. And the same with expenditures. Now, I don't mean to be unduly critical, but there's no nice way to say these things. I mean, how do you know what you spent? Are you in the red or in the black for 2020? Does anybody know? Do you know? And still, that's yeah. dependent on an audit as well. No, that's dependent. That's what your bookkeeping is to tell you in advance. And what that audit is telling you is if the bookkeeping that you approved was accurate or not. That, that, so your bookkeeping should tell you that. Really, in my opinion, and you know we went through this with Angel, Borough Council pulls people off the street, pays a minimum wage, and says you're a bookkeeper. You're not born with the ability to file stuff with Social Security and the IRS, and that's why we're in this jam. We're making the same mistake. I would outsource this to an accounting firm. Not a CPA firm, but just an accounting firm. Now, Catherine would have done it for 300 a month, and you know what happened there, why we didn't get Catherine for the whole thing. Now she has resigned. Which but, I have looked into and am being too good. I'm going to do it. What are you going to do, have, the books? Not all of the books. I'm well, doing payroll, I'm doing the forms that have to go into the IRS, the Social Security forms, the 941, the W-3s, the W-2s, anything that has to do with taxes falls under my lap now. It, it would, you, For the you time still, Yeah, you might consider finding an accounting firm. They they can do that cheaper than they can pay somebody, and you will know the right. product is going to be reliable. Right. And, and we discussed this, and yeah, I understand and, that. What's your but objection again, to that? Again, we're looking at... My objection would be you're sitting here already telling us we're going to run into the red in 21. I don't see how we could possibly afford 300 a month to pay an independent accountant to do well, you, you, you're, you're paying more than that now right. for your bookkeeper and you're you're getting she wasn't trained to do this so you're getting a product that is not is not adequate I, I, madam president didn't um, didn't the secretary uh change to the dceD codes I've i always use the dceD chart of accounts thank you Thank you. But you can see what happened in 2018. You used those same accounts. And there are things that's cropping up. For example, you guys were spinning your wheels for a whole year on these lights, the street lights. That was an accounting issue. That should have been found with your books, not with what you had to go through. You should have known that after one month. That tells me something is amiss with your accounting. If it'll cost you less to outsource it, and you'll, you'll know you'll have reliable information. I, I see you're resistant to that idea, but 
It's up to you, your counsel. I'm not. I'm just giving it, you my opinion. It's not that I'm not agreeable to look into it because you know what? You lay all the options on the table and you say, this is how much this is going to cost. This yes. is how much this is going to cost. You will find it's cheaper. It will cost you less. So and, and you're going to have a reliable product. You, you tell them what you need in terms of your finance report and, and you'll get it. But your finance report, what, I, what Kevin showed me at one point, I wouldn't be able to do the job if I was sitting on this board because the information is insufficient. I mean, almost any board, the way the way a board works, you would have, there's a reason why you have this. You would have two consecutive months. And the reason you have two consecutive months is so you can compare your light bill. If you see in January it was $200 and it jumped to 400 in February, you're alerted instantly what happened. So what happened here? And then you also need a year-to-date column that you compare to your budget. Now, what they do nowadays is they give you a percentage right there. They'll say you're halfway through the year, you're at 50% or 45%, so you can see are you over budget or you're under budget. That way you're not blindsided by problems. You, you can deal with them exactly. very quickly. And, and I agree with you. Um, well, it, it, it won't work by pulling people off the street. These people go to school, they have accounting degrees. It'd be like me trying to do any one of your jobs. I couldn't do it because I wasn't trained to do that. And it's the same with accounting. You wouldn't pull someone off the street and say, I have a brand new car, it doesn't work, will you fix my car? They'll probably not only not fix it, they'll do more damage. And you're in the mm -hmm. same thing with a bookkeeper. Do you're you, doing harm. Do you have anything else so that we can... No, I, I do, I have a lot, but that's 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 good I mean, enough. And I'll, you can, If you want to pursue it with me, you can. If not, that's up to you, the borough council, whatever you want. But, but I'd like to see some money stay here so you can pave roads. You, you can't lose them. $35,000 a year you're losing, that's going to be $100,000 out of paid a half mile of street. I, I, I think that's a travesty. Of death. Let me ask you, how long till you guys see this problem being fixed? Let's say with the taxes. Well, get I, in, I, I, I the don't fuel. see it being fixed for a while. I have to say I've already seen improvement since I started. So to me, I've already seen improvement. In what? As early as six months, I would yes. say. Yes. That you will be. But you'll see later on today, and if you have any questions about it, then you can. If we get somebody to, to do our, our audits <clears throat> and get them in a timely manner, we can get them as early as six months. I know. My problem is we, we we're pushing this finding someone to do our audits out. We we should have had somebody have this done a long time. Did well, you talk to Mr. Trump? Let me ask you this. Well, okay. why do two auditors, two CPA firms, refuse to audit your books? Can you, why do you answer that? Can you answer that, LaDawn? Why, why do two CPA firms refuse to audit? And they're the gold standard. I think it was communication, for one. What, what kind of communication? What do you um, the emails that we've sent, but they never sent back, or it was vice versa. I think it was communication for one. According to the auditors, they were denied uh, evidence. No, not, not denied. Again, I, I spoke I with called Katie. them repeatedly, mm -hmm. and they would not return my phone call. When finally we spoke face to face, they did not realize who I was because our vice president gave one of our rep residents of the borough the permission to speak to them. And right. not that I would have cared. You talking yes. about me? Well, you already said it here in the meeting. Yeah, I, that was no And secret. not that I wouldn't have cared because he is financially knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. But it totally cut me out of the loop. Well, it did now, work. when they want paperwork and they want things handed over to them to complete this audit, and I'm here, and I'm trying to find what they want, and right. I'm calling them, and they won't return my phone call because they have no clue who in the world I am. Well, they, they it causes a problem. Yeah, they, 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 they told they, me they, the office. They, they, they called and called, and they no return. They said, the time I contacted them, they said it was six months. And they hadn't heard from anybody. And I, I called and the gentleman the answered the phone three different times and I asked for Katie and I did not get a return phone call. Okay. I will swear on this Bible. Madam President, could you refer this to the committee uh, that this discussion be entered into the into a committee so that you could move forward in a timely manner for this meeting? 
Paul has anything else? Or no, he's I ready just to wanted to know what the reason before? was or, that. Um, I'm sorry. Um, Reverend Spade, how do you put that? Well, you have the power as president to refer all this, which is valid. All of this it is, is valid. valid. It is should valid. it should go into the finance committee? And who is the chairman? Your finance are. Right. Yeah. Anyway, I'll let so you know so the Thank honorable president. Excuse me. I I'm just answer a question. Uh, that you have the right to refer this because it is going to be lengthy, and he has valid points. He does have valid points. Yeah. He has very valid points. Yeah. So Thank I think I think that Good night, would. Everybody. Thank you. Good night. understand that but there's ways to go about things mm -hmm. and he, he, he does go about it right way. and he, he has told me many times that he's asked for things and hasn't gotten them and i believe the man um, he knows numbers he did his whole life because well, he's not a, he's, he's not a, a cpa you can't do an audit you can't do an audit reverend spade do you have anything this evening yes uh but i will well, try not to be as, uh, <laughs> I'll stay within my five minutes if I may. Uh, I, I have uh, shared with uh, the mayor that I had a right to know in, I believe, December the 17th. I, ne yeah, I, I, I never received any response in five days. I sent a second request to see that, uh, those documents. And I think some of that would be, uh, because they're QuickBooks, the audit trail actually does show every key punch and um, if you had that instead of what you have you'd, you'd know what's going on in the profit and loss doesn't give you the complete picture um, priorities for plowing next issue i would like to um there I don't know how you plan to do things, but uh, I noticed, and I hope that I had permission to do it, I went down to the ball field and made the helicopter pa uh, uh, pad area because there was a foot and a half, two feet of snow down there. And I think that that should be the very first thing that the plow people do. I know that the streets are important, but life-saving venues as the helicopter coming into our, our, our town, that area needs to be cleaned off first. And, and, and I respectfully ask that you consider that. Uh, the second, uh, the third seat. Was there a written opinion given about the ordinance? I'm, I'm bringing it up. I, you mentioned that you were talking about the independent auditors. Yeah, me and the uh, solicitor were working on creating an ordinance for the independent auditors. Wow. So we'll have at least two more months before we would even be able to hire. I have a... one pre wrote up. I just have to send it to her and find her opinion on it before we can go any further. But it has to be advertised, it has to be 30 days, so you almost have two more months before you would even if, have... If we have to go by ordinance, yeah. if we go by resolution, she's trying to, because um, we asked her, being the form, being the resolution that you brought forward. Um, well, that's only a resolution to make an ordinance. That was in 2019. Right. Exactly. If I may, okay. I'm sorry I interrupted that, you. That, all of that was presented to her. And being that there was an ordinance, being that this was the request of council, that it's no longer on, there's no longer elected officials, um, is there an ordinance necessary? Is it done by resolution? That would save us a lot of time. It should, you should amend the codification. The codification should have had it in there, but it's not in there. Uh, in the in inventory of... There was something else that came up here recently. I would have to look at my notes, my notes were at home on that, mm -hmm. that also was not in the codified ordinances that should be. And uh, so, yes, uh, that's on not the agenda here for the meeting, but on the agenda of things to work with is ordinances and 
pulling that stuff together. Okay. And there's a lot of work to be done. Yes. A lot. Do you have anything else, Mr. Spade? Yes. Um, I, I can get it here real quick. Um, there was to be a meeting, according to the Burr Code, on Tuesday the 5th. Was there a meeting? There was not a quorum to hold a meeting. That's why we're meeting here. Today. Well, that was for the meeting of the auditors. For what? For the auditors. It's a it's a lawful and responsibility of borough auditors to meet on the 5th of January. The first Tuesday of every year. We don't have borough auditors uh, anymore. Thank you very much. <laughs> I would... You answered my question. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, and I yield back the balance of my time, and I hope I did not go over the five minutes. You're, you're fine. Um, John, just here for the... Just hanging out. That wall behind the mayor? Yes. I just want to acknowledge Andrew down there. Uh, he did a great job putting the grapes in. They're about 85 pounds, and you have to go up on your head. Ouch. Put, put the grate in the furnace today. Yeah, it was hard. He was on the couch today. <laughs> He's been on the couch all day. He hasn't been. He did a good, he did a good he did job. That. I just wanted to acknowledge. Yeah, as Walt said, um, we lost a couple grates um, in our furnace. So the reason why you're chilly um, is they had to let the fire go out in order to fix those grates, and they are in the process of rebuilding the fire. So it's a little bit in here tonight um, due to that but the grates had to be purchased um, we have to fire so those were purchased um, in Kerwinsville and installed today and that's been taken care of um, Mr. Nardelli yeah, I seen in the paper yesterday's paper uh, correct me if I'm wrong but we back talking about the white buildings uh, there was something mentioned about the bird have to buy them or something, the property or something. Those are things that we kind of have to um, see where the grant gets us. Mm -hmm. And this is a grant that's done for the Vicaria Colport Arvona community as a whole. And um, with that being said, um, we kind of have to see what that grant committee does and how the money's dispersed and exactly what we're going to have to do as far as those buildings are concerned at that time. Because like I said, <clears throat> see in the paper or two of the buildings, just white buildings in the bar right now. Mm -hmm. The one you can get for four hundred fifty dollars, the other is three hundred fifty dollars. Wow. That's clean clear D two. Which way they advertise it. Oh, at the sheriff's show. The sewing factory and the uh, frog guts office. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um when I seen that, you know, that's what I thought. It, that's what was said that the bird would perch it and clean it up and then resell. Right. Uh, Those were some of the ideas that were brought forward. Yeah. Yes. If we had grants. Right. If we had grants, how much is that? That's why we went huh? in with the um, with the with the yeah. uh, uh, sewing factory. And yeah, that yeah, was yeah, it was the the progress. community progress here with the with the area with. Uh -huh. So in fact, it's pretty hard. Either that or vice versa. It was in the five municipalities. That's nice progress. Yeah, White Township. Yeah, it's it's uh the entire it's basically the Chamber of Commerce for the entire school district. Right. Jeff, do you have anything else, Mr. Nardo? Yeah. No? Okay. All right. Um no old business, unfinished business. Okay, Sam's Club membership. Um, so we were doing some pricing for office supplies, supplies for the building, cleaning supplies, paper products, things like that. And um, it is, was brought to my attention that maybe a Sam's Club membership might be the way that the borough should go and buy in bulk. We do have to supply paper products or you know, down at the other end of the hallway. It's a community building. 
Um, also our paper supplies, our ink um, that's here in the office and other office supplies um, could be a lot cheaper if purchased through um, Sam's Club. What do you all think? Madam President, may I ask a question? Sure. Have you ever considered making a list of your items and doing an advertisement for bids for uh, requests for proposals? You mean as far as our office supplies and cleaning supplies and stuff? Yeah, you may get some response that, that would be pleasing to you. It's an idea. But what did we spend last year on office supplies? The thing of it is, with um, what we, for instance, the plow, the plowing here in Coldport, um, we had wanted to be prepared should big snowfall or something happen, such as what happened here um, a few weeks ago. And we had advertised for um, anyone that would be interested in is being a backup plow, snow plow removal, snow removal. No one, but no one even bid. Nobody submitted any um, bids, nobody did anything. So of course, um, the big snow hits and um, our plow goes out and makes a go around town and the hydraulic goes off on the plow and just for the record, um, no, it was not the hydraulic line that was leaking um, while the Christmas lights were hanging because the hydraulic line broke on the plow and we do not have the plow on the truck while hanging Christmas lights. So I want to make that perfectly clear that we were not aware there was a problem with the hydraulic line um, before the big snowfall hit. So the hydraulic line goes and we no longer have a plow. So here we are in Coldport with um, a foot and a half, two feet of snow and nobody plowing snow. Well, I did get contacted by somebody who was willing to um, do that. And they also contacted um, our borough secretary. So he was willing to go out and take care of that for us. Although he didn't submit a bid or anything, you know, when we had asked for it. So I'm really concerned about, you know, having, you know, advertising for bids yet again, and it being a waste of cost in advertising because those certified or, you know, advertising and classifieds are not cheap. And then you turn around and you get nothing and you wasted that money on something like that. And it's not that it's not a bad idea. It's just that I don't know if it's giving the area that we're in, the situation that we're in, you know, I, I'm very thankful for um, Mr. Weld for stepping forward and helping us during, you know, our plow emergency. And thank you so much for doing the same. Um, but I'm one person, you know, I don't know what the rest of you, how you feel about it. Thank you, Madam President. Sure. I was just going to say, I think that, unfortunately, and, and I sh should reflect this to you, I'm sorry, <laughs> but I think we live in a time where we're not reaching the maximum amount of eyes in the newspaper for advertising. I think more people probably get their news digitally now than they do mm -hmm. in the paper. So um, that might be, have been part of the problem during that big uh, situation. I don't know. I don't remember a new way out. Did we put it on the borough Facebook as well? I feel like we did, but I'm not 100% sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that was all I was going to say. That, that could, have, could have been part of the problem. Normally, when we put anything in the classifieds, it's also put on the Facebook page. And normally. And we say normally because we all know how life is. We do not live in Nirvana. We don't live in perfect um, 
perfect anything. So, yeah. So I, I don't know how the rest of you feel about advertising or getting a Sam's Club membership or what you want to do. I mean, I think the Sam's makes, makes good sense. I use Sam's Club myself <laughs> for my same things for the paper or whatever. The yeah. actual How much is a membership you use? 35? We're yeah. probably eligible for the business. The business membership. membership is $100 a year. Um, but a standard membership, I think, is 40 And you also get cash back. back. You, you get cash back, cash with, back. The business. Mm -hmm. with the business one. Um, I looked at a few prices at uh, Staples and uh, some higher, like, you know, Walmart and stuff like that. And I did take Miller out to Sam's to look. And we did see a lot of prices that we did see that was cheaper for, like, the big box of the paper and stuff are then we cut that price in half right there with that paper, you know, compared to staples and stuff like that. So um, I'm all for about the Sam's Club and saving money and getting cash back. I think it makes sense. Because you can use that cash back on other supplies it's, and stuff. You have to spend so much to get cash back. Or you I think every it's little, a, I think it's a plateau. Like every five hundred dollars you spend, you get so much. Yeah, back you get so much money there's, back. There's like so much of a plateau. You spend so much money, you get this much back, and then you spend this much I'm money, sure and you get this much back. Much to, you know, I think it's worth. I'll just say we try. You can put that money toward a membership for the next year too. Yes, correct. Well, yeah. So yeah. it yeah. kind yeah. of like yeah. pay for yeah. itself yeah. from year to year, depending on the money that you get back. You kind of put that money back, and there's your membership for the following year. But there was a lot of things that we could buy at Sam's that was in bulk, and it is a lot cheaper. Yeah, I can see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like um, the Clorox wipes. I mean, yeah. they come in three, five packs. The paper towels, the paper that she used for a copier, the ink, you know, stuff right. like that. Pens, it's paper. Cheaper. It's cheaper. It's cheaper yeah. than five bucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion to get the Sam's membership. Any discussion? Just as long as we're we're using for what we need it for. We also can purchase tires there, um, yeah. oil, oil, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I think yeah. it would help out with the maintenance things, yeah. also yeah. to save. I can't beat that. Mm -hmm. Good prices for that. Yeah. Okay, I have a motion on the floor. Do I have a second? I'll second that. All those in favor, signify by aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion carries. Um, with our committees. Um, that we have, um, we have now where we meet the fourth Wednesday of the month, and I think that this is this is an organizational meeting. It's the first meeting of the year, so now is the time to change this kind of thing. Um, the last Wednesday of the month, instead of you know the third, it, it, always make it the last Wednesday of the month, and then that way, if it's the fifth Wednesday, if it's the fourth Wednesday, it's not going to matter because I know it was a lot of confusion for right. everybody because they were like, well, do we have a meeting tonight? And, you know, it, it just, so committee meetings um, change it up from the fourth Wednesday of the month to the fifth Wednesday of the month. Um, I have the discussion now. I guess this is the time for me to go. Well, the last time you did it, you did And you, you know this because I had this discussion with you. But my winter schedule is such that I can't wait for anything. I we can start them at 7 o'clock and it's well, I don't want to do that to anyone because I feel like that's distracting to someone leaving so much. What I was going to say is maybe I shouldn't chair that committee. I should be the second person on that committee. That way, that way you're not always missing the chair. You see what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. I, I, because I feel like I'm, I'm derelict of duty there, but I just, I, you know, I have to be at work because of my... Summertime will be fine again, but my winter schedule, I just don't get home in time to make those meetings. So, I mean, we can discuss we, that. As I say, we can talk about it, but okay. that's where I am on that. It's okay. not like I've just been not coming. When I did tell you that, it's before. Right, right, I know it's work related. So, um, that's basically where we're at. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it to the last Wednesday of the month. Last Wednesday of the month instead of the fourth Wednesday of the month, and I think it would ease up a lot of confusion. Anything else on that? Okay, I, I think I need a motion. We might as well do a motion just to make sure. <laughs> yeah, if I'm, I will also need a motion to advertise for the whole year for the regularly scheduled meetings and for the committee meetings. Okay. I'll make a motion. 
Those in favor signify by aye. aye. Okay. Any opposed? Um, Noelle stated that she also has to have a motion in order to advertise um, the rest of the meetings for the year and the committee meeting. Um, I have done. I'll make the motion if you don't have a good thing. I'll second it. All those in favor or all those in favor signify by aye. aye. Any opposed? Okay. Um, BCIMA. Uh, Mr. Gallagher, he was up December 31st. We're going back to the big one. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Appreciate you being here. Thank you for pr your prayer. So, Mr. Gallagher, um, his um, seat was up with the Water Authority, or with the um, BCIMA, um, which is the sewage and, and water, um, as of December 31st. Yeah, yeah. Jack Gallagher, yes, I'm sorry. And so I received a letter from him. It says, I, Jack Gallagher, have been seated on the BCIMA Water Authority Board. My appointed time to set on the board has expired. I am respectfully asking the borough to extend my service to the BCIMA Board. Thank you for your kind consideration. So um, being that he would like to keep his seat, um, any objections to that? Okay, I would need a motion for him to remain on the BCIMA board. I make a motion to keep Jack Gallagher on the BCIMA, BCIMA board. Okay, any discussion? I was glad to hear it wasn't a resignation. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Sorry, Madam President. I can ask that of them. At least somebody. Um, I'm hoping pretty soon that they were normally pretty good at the sending us the minutes of the meeting. I mean, if they can be here, I would like to have the minutes, but then if they would be here, that would be nice to get them. Okay. All right. Anything else? Who's our other representative? Um, Mike Delfoss and, and Joe Adam. Joe Adam. Take a picture. Yes. Yeah. One of them. Okay. We have a second to that. No. No. Second. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor, signify by aye. Aye. Uh, Any opposed? Okay. Motion carried. Does the borough receive the minutes of the meetings? That's what we just said, that we used to receive the minutes. Um, so we could pos possibly talk to them and see if they would, if, if Shelly would consider sending them to us again to the boroughs. I'm not even sure if they even had any meetings because the COVA for a while there. They did, they not, not, they did not have yeah, any meetings I, for a while. I'm pretty sure they, yeah, I'm okay. pretty sure they didn't. And I Thank think you. that's why we weren't getting a lot because they weren't having it because of that reason. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, um, Mr. Weld, as I said, he was our backup um, snow removal person, and he is um, interested in continuing that, um, continuing that position for the borough. At what rate? Uh, fifteen an hour. At fifteen dollars an hour for snow removal. What, yes. What road is that? What's Dean. Mm -hmm. Any objections to that? I don't. I don't. I, yeah. I think he did a great job when he was under um, with the conversation. I can. <laughs> motion. I am motion to accept Mr. Wild in plowing our back. Properly moved and second. All those in favor signify by aye. aye. Any opposed? Okay. Just one question. Um, no. Was you 
usually you say any discussion and you didn't, so I was waiting. All right, okay, go ahead. He, is he, uh, when our truck's working properly, we obviously don't need him. He only comes so out he only when, comes we, when call we call him. Okay, that's yeah. what I was gonna So ask. like if we I just get, didn't want him coming down here in a snowstorm plowing on the street. No, 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 he won't he, come he, until he, I contact him. He is right backup on. only, so he only comes <laughs> when we call. He's is that watch. using his vehicle? <laughs> that is using his vehicle, he supplies the gas, everything. Um, Fifteen dollars an hour. Wow. Yeah. So, um, yeah, snap him up. Unless we have eight feet of snow, then we might want to call him in to help. <laughs> well, right. Yeah, that was another thing that I was going to, you know, state. You know, we we get a major storm like we did the last time, where they the guys just can't keep up. It yeah, wouldn't right. be a bad idea to call him in and, and have him out. It would too. give them a break also because even if they're plowing all day and that snow's still coming, even through the night. They're still out there, you know, till it could be like it was five o'clock. The they it need was a break. Five. A bit, they you know? started at three o'clock in the afternoon, the day the snow hit. And when I left, I went away on vacation at five, and I left at five o'clock in the morning, the day after the snowstorm, and they were still plowing at five o'clock in the morning. So that was 14 hours that these guys were out, and they had worked their regular day that day getting ready for the snowstorm, making sure the, that the salt was on the truck, making sure the truck was up and running, making sure the plow was on, making sure everything was ready to go. And then they went home, got a couple hours sleep, and went out at three and was out for 14 hours. At nine o'clock, I think it was nine, 9.30 maybe, the night the snow hit, you were doing my street and I was shoveling the walk. And when you stopped, I felt terrible. I didn't even have any coffee to offer you. I was sick. <laughs> I felt like I should say something, but I didn't have anything made. and was getting ready to go to bed. Yeah, I think you had a lot of issues that night. A lot. There was there was a lot. There was a Freezing. lot of issues. Yeah, it was frozen. We could take the fuel to the right. Yes. 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 I felt the same way. Um, Andrew came over. I was going to work at third shift midnight, and he came for around. I'm like, don't have anything. <laughs> so bad. Yeah. Um, yeah, there was a lot of issues that night. Walt called me, I think it was 12.30. So I was asleep because I planned on getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning to leave. And Walt calls me at 12.30 and, um, <laughs> what did you tell me? Well, first of all, the stuff froze in the bed. Oh, and yeah. We had to chop it and try to heat it, so we just dumped the load and got new. Then the line blew. And, yeah, he called me and told me about the line blew and that they would have to take the back out. And I said, Walt, well, you do what you need to do. Well, who leaves for vacation at 5 o'clock in the morning on the day of the biggest storm of the year? My mom does. Barb. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, everybody in their complaints was plowing in, and I'm on vacation dealing with everybody. If you got to go on vacation, I. I deserve another vacation because it wasn't I much of one. I only got one complaint through the whole storm. <laughs> I got a I got maybe got six it. every day. Yeah, it was. Somebody's it was. Somebody's boat got hit, and I was probably the first person to take. I didn't hear take the question I didn't on that. that. Yeah, but our truck wasn't up and running. It, I don't think it was our. Yeah, it was. It definitely and was. Andrew ours. had called Dean to make sure that it wasn't him and. Bean swears that it wasn't him. him. Well, then we found out the Keller truck, truck, and it definitely wasn't Bean because yeah. the Keller didn't match. <laughs> so okay. Somebody was plowed in his boat. I don't know who it was. But I was just standing on the street and got uh, uh, chewed out for streets not being plowed. <laughs> and I have nothing in it. <laughs> Did you hit the boat? <laughs> what? Did you hit the boat? Somebody hit the boat. No. You no, I didn't. I hit what boat? There's a boat down there somebody hit. Uh, I don't <laughs> think I hit any boat. I did get a complaint about it anyway, but I got, I got a complaint about streets of above us. And I said, did you take care of it? He, no, he came the next day and apologized to him. <laughs> oh, <he> apologized. <laughs> oh, there's report. <laughs> I sent one letter of information to residents here in Coalport, and that's all I did this month. Okay. Anything else? No, it was Article 60, if anybody wants to look it up. Okay, right to know request. Um, I did get one right to know request from Mr. Spade. Um, I apologize. I've been out with a decent amount of health issues 
So I have most of everything ready in there for you to look at, but I, I didn't have everything yet, so. <laughs> Which brings me to ask you a question, okay? Yes, um, ma'am. So there's, there's eight requests on here. Okay, let's say she, you know, she, she can get to, okay, we'll say like she can get to five of them fairly quickly, okay? But the other three is going to take her a little bit of time. Would you like for her to go ahead and send you those five? I usually do. I one? usually send him. She, she she's very proficient in explaining. She re does a detailed report of why she did something and why she did not do something, and I appreciate that. And the uh, uh, only thing is, the law says that you have to respond to me five in five business five business days. That she is in the office. Yeah. Uh, well, five business days. That she and, is in the office. That the office is open. Uh, I don't think that. It, 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 that it is, is her business day. Yeah. yeah. She's in the that five, five open business days. Yeah. So there she hasn't been office. anything since December the 17th. So there's more than five days. Um, at any rate, it, just that statement that some things she can and some things she can't. And once you have a right to an extension, so you do have a right to extension. Exactly. Um. But I could have argued tonight on the finances if I would have gotten a detailed report. And I have been watching it, and I do see things, but I wasn't, I'm not in here to criticize. <laughs> we appreciate that a lot. Well, uh, I mean, it's nice to criticize. I, I, I agree with what he's saying, uh, Mr. Zubich, and he has some valid well, I, points, I, I but what's, what's the remedies? Uh, I mean, I what are the remedies? Uh, the only thing that you could, you could get the court involved that they would appoint somebody, if nobody will do the job, you have every lawful right, I believe, if you contact your solicitor, that the court will appoint somebody to come in and do your audit because it's mandatory. Correct. I think we might, that might be the best thing to do. Yeah. Instead of going out and trying to find people. Uh, and the court. Right. We have somebody else that we're checking with. Have you yet? You need relief on this matter. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, QuickBooks flight payroll. Where are we at with that? Um, I wanted to talk to you guys about it. LaDawn, President, and I spoke the other night when we were looking through forms. Um, we would like to get the QuickBooks payroll back. So since we don't have Catherine anymore, it, it would be easier for me to be able to sit down and do payroll. And I wouldn't be sending it out anymore. I would be doing it here on our own computer. And I mean, usually it'll we have all sorts of different pros to getting it. Um, it's only going to be about 23 bucks a month. Um, it would generate the different tax forms for me, like the 941s. Which means I wouldn't have to do them anymore. So yeah. Like, so that she's got a handle on So this. it would automatically generate those for me, so all I would have to do is sign them and send them out. Uh, it's the same thing with like the W-2s and stuff like that. Everything will automatically be done for me to go ahead and send out. So we would have the proof on the computer that it was there and I would have like actual paper copies of it and I want to know what you guys thought. You're willing to give it a try? Yeah. <laughs> so like in addition to that, um, she has been practicing and with this new thing that costs twenty-three dollars a month, it does do it automatically on there. Yeah, it will automatically. And it's just take another it's just another thing that adds to her QuickBooks as she does now. So, um, and then um, but everything comes in order and stuff, and then we can always double check with personnel. Yeah, we can see we can't afford any mistakes. And thing. if everything works out, we would not have to do the checks anymore right now. It would automatically go to their yeah, I could do a bank deposit or Correct I could deposit. choose to do a check. So there is an option to do that so we would be saving on... They, 
They do, but it's voided out. They, they still get the check and everything, yeah. and they get their pay stuff. Yeah. And right. that does that all on there. Plus, like I said, we would be saving on checks. It would just directly deposit. Mm -hmm. I think that's phenomenal. Wow. It looks like a really good program, and I did look it up a couple times. Yeah, we to had sure that we, have, we would have everything in order that she would definitely meet. I believe she can do it. And well, I feel like we can. Okay. Do we want to do a trial run to make sure? I mean, oh, can we do a, I, you know, a month or two months? I would sure? say at least three or four months for a trial run. Try three months. I mean, if we all agree to something like that, we can. Are the W-2s ready to go out right now? Because they'll be due this month. I, I know. I, the W-2s and W-3s are due on January 31st. And no, I was trying to get everything together that had to go out to the IRS and that we needed for the liquid fuels. I was here until after 10 o'clock last night. And I started yesterday morning. And okay. we were here the day before. We're still working. My computer is still in the office. <laughs> and guess where I'm going to be after the meeting tonight? Working on those forms to get them out. Um, so Thank you. It's a lot of work, yeah. Yes. especially when you have to catch up on previous years. We had to do 2015 through 2020, but there was one that was missing from 2020. There were two, that had to be filed. Two, two from 2020 that had to be filed. A lot of data. And the W-9s are all in from the employees or from everyone? I will have to check. That's what's nice. We can outsource that. I feel like um, just even when I came about in February that I mean I saw the record room and it's it looked terrible and now it's she's done a lot of work in there and put things in order and it looks a lot better I think so I mean she has dates on things and stuff like that and she put a lot of work into that so and I, I feel like everything was just a mess. I there can't imagine like I don't nowadays. like that. <laughs> I found but, uh, things yeah. in my desk in a phone book or not a phone book but a catalog for play equipment for down at the park. I found one of the tax papers that was needed. Yeah. That's, that's how I thought. I'm like, what is this doing in this book? And she dug out every cabinet, every drawer in there, and she separated it. So Very good. It's been a lot of work. I can't imagine. And we're still glad I wasn't here. <laughs> but in a way, I was just like, I, I could see the progress. I really did. Good. good. You, you've got experience with it, so that's good. That's good. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We say just try three months and see how things go. And with... Uh, and like I said, I will be doing the payroll as far as figuring everything out beforehand, um, you know, like from your timesheets and everything, and I will be with her as she does the payroll to make sure she's got a handle on it and it goes. Which, like I said, it should because in the program, it'll automatically take the taxes out. So I wouldn't have, have to worry about that. a math error or anything like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, right now it is, but we're going we're gonna to move on to that, but we need to... Okay. I make a motion <laughs> <laughs> to uh, reacquire the QuickBooks payroll and have Noelle, our secretary, do a three-month trial run. Make sure it works out. Any discussion on this? What's your paying... What's your, pay, <laughs> <laughs> what's your paying for in the 23 is the scheduling tax schedules. Uh, that are in that uh, addendum that you get the into QuickBooks. Okay. That's what you're paying for. Is that work for the new schedules? Yeah, we'll get the. I know it's around 23, so, but we'll get an accurate price here. So. Yeah, it's 22 and like yeah, some something. Else. Else. Yeah. Doesn't the municipal get a cut rate? A rate? 
decrease, I, you should ask. Tell them the, who, who you are. So I have um, a second to the motion. Um, everybody in favor signify by aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, the employees had asked about a weekly payroll instead of bi-weekly payroll since we're not outsourcing at this time. Um, they are like, like while I was doing the timesheets and payroll, they are two weeks behind the eight ball. Like, they would work for two weeks and that pay week would end and then they would wait for two weeks before they would ever get a pay check for that. So it's almost, you know, from the start of that pay week until they get paid, it's almost a whole month. And so we were talking um, about doing this weekly. And what do you think? They had suggested they, they had suggested wanting to be paid weekly. I, I mean, at the end of the day, I don't see what difference it makes to the borough, one way or another. Yeah, but we have to have a motion before. I, we no, I get that, but <laughs> so I'm just I just say. I'm just trying to eliminate the discussion part of the front. Everybody's emotion, don't tell them. Everybody's emotion. How much more work is going to be involved with it? It's going to be the same amount. You're going to have, you're, you're just going to plug in the numbers and yeah, the only difference is instead of me doing it every two weeks, I'm just doing it every week. I figure every two weeks it would take you twice as long to do it. It, it usually does because so then, use, like whenever I would outsource it, out. I would have like a group, like I would do it by week. I would have one group for the one week, and then I would have another group for the other week. And it took a while to type all of it out, so I mean, really, there's not going to be much of a difference. The transition from our previous worker to our secretary was there an audit done for between? No before money exchanged hands. Excuse me? She did all the money. No money exchanged hands. Maybe I didn't ask my question. I apologize. The reason why you wanted an audit done, which are you talking about taxes or are you talking about payroll? Uh, the payroll? Pay, she resigned. Was there an audit done after she resigned and the books were given to our no secretary? No money exchanged hands and no books exchanged hands. She kept the books. Our bank account stayed there. What happened was Catherine would tell her what to write, what deductions there were, and she deducted it, and she did that part of the work. All Catherine did was the payroll as far as the amounts. Thank you. did not touch our bank account whatsoever. Thank you for the clarification. Sure. Back on weekly payroll. <laughs> like I said, I don't, I don't see what difference it makes either way. I mean, it's doing what you need for them. It's not like they're making any more or any less money. No. I work for I work for people that I got paid every week as as an agency nurse when I was a contract nurse I was paid weekly. I get paid every week. Him and I we sit here at the table and we both get paid weekly. Not I won't get paid weekly. No. <laughs> <laughs> What's your I, opposition? What's that? What's your opposition? I I just everybody usually does it every two weeks. I, I just. Put that on the ledge. Be different. <laughs> <laughs> it could be part of the trial thing. I'll so go. I'll go. I'll go. Yeah, because then we know. Right. Uh, let's do a couple months and. Okay. Well, that's great. a good idea, right? I'm all, I'm all that could be a can try something new and, and step sure. out of the box that's a little true. bit and see how. Yeah, because whenever I first started, like it was stated, I didn't get a paycheck for two weeks. That was longer than two weeks because you waited that two yeah, weeks. Because, you had to work two weeks and yeah. you waited that two weeks and then you got paid. So I, if you want to do like a trial. Don't do a trial. Don't do a trial. Yeah. 
three months strong. Three yeah. months, and then we'll come back? Yeah. Okay. So, um, I can motion that. <laughs> I'll second it. Okay. All those in favor signify by aye. We get aye. stuff done. Any aye. opposed? <laughs> okay, motion carried. Um, Noelle would like to make our windstream bill, like our Penelope bills and everything, they come out of our bank account automatically. Windstream bill, there's normally no fluctuation or anything. She would like to set up auto withdrawal with the windstream bill. Is there any opposition to that? You currently write them a check every month? Yep. That's crazy. Guess what I need. I made a motion to uh, make our windstream account automatic withdrawal. Any discussion? Okay, do I have a second? I'll second. You asked if there was any discussion on everything tonight, but the <laughs> one thing I had a discussion about. I want to know what that's about. <laughs> I have ESPN, I knew. Oh, yeah. 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 She knew. Yeah. 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 I was sitting there chomping. I set you up. up. Never happened. <laughs> okay. All those in favor signify by aye. Um, aye. Any opposed? We had budgeted um, for the employee pay um, for the employees to, to receive their raises. Um, Go so ahead. To continue, that would move um, Walt up to eleven dollars an hour. Um, Noel would be moved up to ten dollars an hour, and Andrew had, would also be moved up to ten dollars an hour. Um, Is there any opposition? I'm already with the money now. See when you're going to bring this look at yours. Not, not that I'm not saying anybody don't deserve it, but where's the money going to come from? Well, it only liquid fuels is relevant whenever they're doing road work. I, I know. But we, that's still um, what work did we end up? We only won't be ended up with this year. Where we were at. More of red, black. According to our bank accounts, we're in the black. We still have almost twenty thousand of liquid fuels. We have almost fifty thousand in the general fund, and we're starting a brand new year. If my memory does serve me right, we were in the black whenever we got done because whenever um, well, Sean no, and that's I, coming up. Yeah, that's okay. going to be coming up. But. That's a good thing. But that's coming up. And Sean has some good news for us all. We're thinking now. I make nine, Andrew makes nine, and we'll make ten. <laughs> and we budgeted. We did actually. Because this was brought up in a previous meeting before we ever budgeted the raises. Will you be exempt when the president this year passes uh, legislation for fifteen dollars an hour? Is the borough exempt? I would have to look over that legislation to see. <laughs> That's one of the priorities, he says, and. First nineteen or first hundred days. Sean, what'd you find out? Tell us our it on you. <laughs> At the end of the December 14th meeting, uh, we came up here and I looked through the Penelet bills, and I apologize I didn't see it sooner. Neither did I, and I either did guilty. Our Penelet bills, um, even the ones for the building, all six, six, seven. There's seven. All seven. Yeah, seven bills. Penelet bills. Um, at the very right top right hand corner it says that this much will be deducted from your account automatically on, on this certain day, 23rd of December, whatever. Um, here, 
our bills, our payment bills, our payment bills are, are automatically withdrawn from our account. They were counting our past due with our current charges, each bill, and saying that's how much they were going to take out of our account. I had Noel print out our Northwest savings uh, statements, and it turns out they were only taking out the current charges. So instead of an $18,000 bill for light for street lighting, we were at 9000 something for this year. I was thinking the year before, you yeah. budgeted $8,000. So, 10, the, so we do we, not have the electrical issue that we thought we, we did. did. We would have. And well, I found out from my contact at Penelac. He did email me today, by the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The borough. He emailed me too. The borough did not, when they wanted to go to LEDs, the borough, according to them, the borough did not, at the borough at the time, did not follow through with it. And the majority of our lights that we have are still under a 20 year contract. Like, there's at least 12 years on the old lights that we have on that contract. And it would be a lot of money for the borough. It would be eight to $9,000 for us to want to switch over to LEDs now. And they would need that up front in order to when we saw 12 years on the contract, they there, take care of the lights for it. Wasn't there agreement for 12 lights to be converted? And yeah, they the say, they're saying it's the, not in... The contract it, is saying that we didn't follow through, but I could almost swear that, yes, we did. Yeah. And But what had happened was the person that we had the agreement with, she retired. She retired, and, and we... That, that, our and account went to somebody else. To find this. I that's wish, what this took a while for him to find somebody or find whoever had our account. I wish Mr. Zubich was here, because yeah. we work I we we, we we worked hard to get that all in place. Now we, we have a conference call uh, Wednesday morning at eleven o'clock. Wednesday morning at eleven um, with our contact to better discuss our bills and to see what we can do. Um, to possibly further lower our street lighting and possibly building bills. But at this point, we've already cut it in half. And when there is an electrical problem, yeah, I, which is I, great, and there's no down default that we know of, it was just how they presented it on the bill was just completely I, their mistake. I, I and checked the problem. current bill, and I checked the current statement, and then we went back six months. Yeah. I said I wanted to see how long this was going on, and we checked it again, and then we went back. We went back a whole year. We and went back the whole year for me, Noel. <laughs> we sat here and went through every single payment, and we matched it up with Northwest. Um, well, no, they, they never took out. You know, they didn't take out what they said they were going to take yes. out. Oh, okay. They yeah. did not take out what they said they were going to take out. So when we thought we were paying all that money, we actually wasn't. According to the statement, from I was looking the at the bank. bills, and then all of a sudden it hit me. I'm like, wait, if it's on that, why do we have a past due? We shouldn't have passed due. Especially when the next bill comes out, we should already be taken care of. Right. So then I went back and looked at the Northwest, and they were just taking out the current charges. So we got money in the bank. Right. <laughs> so now we budgeted 18000 for this year. Yeah, we don't need it. Yeah, I doubt it. I checked last. I didn't get to put December in, but we were at eleven thousand. Yeah. I mean, it's. I, I can't believe that it, none of us just, even I thought about it, doing the statement from the bank out. until yeah, he no, said about it, and I'm like, yeah. why? Yeah. But that is. Yeah, that's what I'm doing now. Is I'm still going in and double checking. So now. As a personnel, we are checking those statements and stuff like that to make it sure. Said, it said if it took it out on the, on the 23rd of December, sure enough, on that bank statement, it said the 23rd of December, the exact amount was being taken out. So or that exact current charges was taken out, not the whole amount they said they were taking out. I know, right? <laughs> it's like Christmas present. <laughs> Happy New Year. I was excited. I know. Happy New Year. <laughs> I was thinking yeah, faulty wiring because that can be probably be put the charge up. Which is yeah. something that will be discussed with this meeting. Yeah. That's what I was asking. Did you read the meters? Actually, physically read the meters? I think on their meeting, they're going to go over a lot of stuff. So hopefully, we'll have more the next meeting to 
whatever they can find out. All the meters are converted to the new computerized in the borough? Or do they manually we, come? We have got to, when we meet with this gentleman on Wednesday, we have to meet with him by way of computer. Um, we'll have a lot of questions that hopefully he can answer. A Zoom meeting? He, he goes with Microsoft oh, Teams. And okay. Microsoft Teams. So, yeah, okay. Yeah. Never heard of that one before, so <laughs> I'll let you know how good it is. Liz is not Google right now. They crashed a few times, didn't they, with the whole yeah, with the school. school and yeah. So being that we have money that we budgeted that it's not going to cost eight thousand dollars to give these guys a raise. It's just not. And they do a heck of a lot, and they put up with a heck of a lot, and. Maybe I don't know we maybe if I we would do their job for ten dollars. Well, I'll get out of the vehicle. <laughs> maybe we hear the new schedule of fees that you're proposing. The what? The new schedule of fees of the the wages. The wages. The wages. Yeah. Um Noel and Andrew would be at ten and Nud would be raised to eleven. Thank you. What do you what did Andrew start at? Uh, since Andrew was a returning employee, he had to go back up to nine. Shh. In the past, it was always like 25 cents. <laughs> and, and I get that. And and there were years where they didn't get anything at all. I think, is it in the, is it in the, uh, I think it's been a while since we had we, have like we didn't get one cents? since last year. And they're actually supposed to get periodic wages, wage raises throughout the year every so many days according to um, their work. And they haven't gotten those wages either. Does personnel do reviews? Yes, we've I all have been doing I reviews. Have we have uh, staff meetings every other Wednesday. Thank you. She meets with our staff. She asks them if there's any problems going on, um, if they have any issues, if there's anything that they needed to present. Um, basically just fills around and sees how, see how things are going with them. Thank you. I like the motion for the raise for the dollar more. Any more discussion? Do I have a second? All those in favor signify by aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. I'm sorry. I kicked her out of her office and told her let's go before I got. I mean, it's not going to take long for me to turn. I already had a phone up. It's still turning. to use the truck since thank you you haven't yes. had to use the plow or anything since we got it fixed have you yeah yeah it worked well we, re we rerouted the uh, hydraulic hose down there it what happened it pinched the uh, spring okay so we, we rerouted it but that's the way it was set up a weekend yeah, but i got a spare hose just in case okay great um Oh 
she would have to check on that and see. Um, Noelle does. She has to. She has to contact them. I have this theater going. It was nice and toasty. Like I shut all the doors. Do you want to try spots and build a heat? No, that's okay. No, we're almost done. She's staying another hour and a half. <laughs> there is a draft coming right here and it would come right over to the mayor yeah, it, when i was when we were in here working yesterday we shut all the doors do you want me to shut it if you, jo john if you can you shut to, it i mean i mean it is it's uh, really cold coming in here <laughs> Thank you, John. We got to get an award for this. I was going to wear my gloves and tails in the kitchen for which I wrote from. I was going to get like um, hand sanitizer instead of stick it on the desk and the table. And the table. I know. Showing that that even like we had budgeted for wages, we had budgeted forty five thousand. Yeah, we've only paid out. We paid out less than twenty eight thousand in wages. Mm -hmm.
That was a switch around in um, when we had to take and redo the DCED codes for QuickBooks and switch stuff around. It changed categories, so therefore it changed the amount. There was something else that I wanted to, yes, it's going to take a motion, just saying. Our park, right now it's on a donation basis only. And as you can see, we're not getting the donations in. Um, so we're going to have to decide, like Pavilion 3, uh, well, correct me if I'm wrong, Pavilion 3 does not have electricity, does it? Yes, it does. It does have electricity. Yes. But it's not in the best of shape. No. no. So, like, Pavilion 3 would probably be, like, cheaper as compared to Pavilions 1 and 2. They have the sound of release form when they go in there. Yes. The yes. Um, well, for instance, okay, when we had the revival, of course, we had taken up both pavilions, and there was a birthday party down there, which they did not reserve. They didn't reserve. When, when you so don't reserve the right, park right. and you just use it, you don't have access to electricity or running water, you can just go down and use the park. But, you know, if it's reserved, if somebody else has pavilions reserved, of course you can't use those because somebody supposedly paid for those, reserved those. Um, but, you yeah, know, Pavilion 3 does get used, if, especially if uh, other parts of the park are being used. Yeah, I know it needs a lot of work. I think it needs... Take when I was down, um, I haven't been down there because it's been swampy, but you know, with the weather and stuff, yeah. but I think it might need a little it's maintenance a here and stuff. Yeah. Take it down. <laughs> well, we That's had actually looked at grants for taking it down, it and it have gotten some bids why would, why would to rebuild one, one like yeah. Pavilion 1 and 2. Well, my wife and a couple other people are trying to get a grant to build it, build another one out. Okay, you down. When you're down there, a lot of people come down. Yeah, I'm on the committee, and I didn't know. So, like, um, <laughs> well, mm -hmm. we get some of this mess straightened around with the taxes and everything. Corporate girl would be able to get grants all on the round, and we'd be able to do stuff with the park. And yeah, which um, an update on that, since we were doing the forms and stuff like that, I had to check back with one of the contacts for uh, one of the people that could lift our Z block. There's only one form now that they're missing, and I'm trying to figure out how to get that form filled out. But I should most likely get that filled out so then we're eligible for grants again. Mm -hmm. Allegation was made tonight that about the liquid fuels. That was granted we were we got our liquid fu fuels not last year we did not we got it the year before we did not get it this year oh, oh, did they give you a reason why yes. yes they let us know the different forms that were missing and that's what i'm talking about as soon as we get those done our okay. walk is lifted and we should get liquid fuels back and all the federal tax that was all mailed out this past week 
Like that's what we've been working on. Like I yeah. said, I was here the day before yesterday. I was here yesterday from morning until after ten o'clock last night. Thank you. Whenever we're done here, I'm going back in and getting the stuff put together. So that sounds very good. They have not um, reissued those bills. Not reissued them like. They, they haven't sent. sent more. They have not sent more. We're hopeful. Since we're caught up on the forms, I don't think we would get much, if any. Well, they also stated in that letter that if we could submit a letter with those forms stating why, you know, these things weren't taken care of, which, you know, I had stated that she is a brand new secretary you know we walked into here to finding the, the the file the files were not things were not filed where they should have been um and yeah they were it was basically a mess and we are trying to get things put together again and it's taking some time to get everything that they need so hopefully um penalties and stuff because they said that they would um waive the penalties if we had good reason why um, this stuff was not taken care of and you know what was going on and you know we're still working at getting everything in what we need to get in but it takes a lot of time especially when you don't you can't go to a file cabinet drawer pull open a file cabinet drawer and look and see oh here's the 941 for 2018 it didn't happen that way she has seven or eight plastic bins full of things and and that is that's not quite the way she found it. She found it in cardboard boxes. She found it stuffed. She found it stuffed in desk drawers. She found it in the record room. There were records all over this building that, and like I said, what I found in my desk drawer in a catalog, I almost threw that out because I was throwing out the catalog. The catalog was old and there sits our tax paper. And I don't know what ever possessed me to pick that thing up and shake it out. I shook them all up. And there was a tax paper in it. I know what you mean about cardboard box. That's how I got the marriage stuff. In a cardboard box. There's, there was just no rhyme or reason to anything. Nothing. So to even do these things quickly, you can't. You just can't. And it's taking a lot of time. But... LaDawn, LaDawn was here. I mean, she worked all day with me. I, I was here. We're trying. And that's all I can say. I'm, I'm hoping it's good enough, but that's, that's all you get is trying to the best of our ability. I mean, from now on, it's going to be better because everything's going to be oh, yeah. fouled right, right yeah. correctly. It's but it's just getting to it, you know. It started on. I know. I don't want to look at that file again. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my God. <laughs> we had the other night, we had files all over this room, and I mean, it was like, it was a mess. I like the record room. I think it's unique. It has <laughs> yeah. I, went, I just stood there and I thought, geez, should I? And they already saw me. I can't turn around. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the record room was amazing. I, picking up some of those ledgers and looking at those ledgers from like yeah. years back. I mean, when the borough was first, I think the one ledger was 1933. There's I was history. looking through. There is history in that. Right? Oh, yeah, Somebody definitely. Knew. Definitely history in that. Somebody was a history buff, they could do it. We're not throwing anything away, are we? No. Okay. No, no, no. You just go down the road. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I don't you're think they throw anything away. I'm a history buff, but I'm just all this. You're not. Stuff you're not allowed. Right. That's no, a, no. that's what I was getting at. There are certain guidelines with when you just can throw stuff away. Get organized. It has like anything to do with like an audit or anything like that. You have to keep it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I need a motion for the bills. I make a motion to pay the bills, keep the bill running. 
Any discussion? Do I have a second? I second that. Kevin Ladon. I'm sorry. Amy, 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 it. No. <laughs> Any discussion on that? Okay. All those in favor signify by aye. Aye. Any opposed? Anything for the good of the borough? Thank you for opening the back door at 6.30 so I could come in. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. We just sat up here and we were worried about it being too cold down there and this was the warmest end and I'm sorry. That door, if we would have closed that, my yeah, feet, my, my leg was about froze. So. I'm warm already. <laughs> <laughs> I should have done something. I was going to say, since that door's been closed, it's getting warmer. It is, yeah. Yeah, for some reason. Yeah, the it was a, there was a breeze yeah, coming right yeah. in it. It's really cold out there. Thank you so much. Yeah, there's no heating center here. Either. My room is not nice. Kevin has a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. Motion. All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Any opposed? Meeting adjourned. Um, I don't know who has the sign-in sheet that was on the agenda, but I need that. One hour and 46 minutes. Now All the way, girl. All the way. Jeez. <laughs>